the worst part for sure of doing any of these projects is the cleanup. And my wife can definitely attest to that. I hate cleaning. I love making a mess, but uh, I hate cleaning up afterwards. so I'm super excited for today's video it's gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to it's gonna be a more raw video you're going to be uh, seeing what I'm doing not necessarily in real time but I have no idea what I'm about to do and I'm gonna figure it out with you guys so uh, don't expect like a polished how-to video nothing like that this is gonna be us figuring out how to do what I'm about to talk to you about as we go <laughs> so as you can see behind me here um, I've got some equipment so a few weeks back we were down in Florida doing some boondocking and discovered that our uh, solar system didn't ventilate properly and what was happening is we were overheating our equipment and it was going into thermal shutdown and of course we weren't able to use our solar equipment so what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to try and figure out some sort of ventilation cooling equipment that's going to run off of 12 volt so hopefully it'll be pretty efficient um, and I won't have to have um, anything inverting when it's not necessary so I guess uh, let's go ahead and get to it so here on the table I've got some 3 inch uh, ducting uh, I've got some random little connectors here I've got a a couple of inline blowers. They're 12 volt uh, blowers that are usually uses, used that are usually used in bilges uh, for boats. I've got some cabling. These I think are going to work, but uh, we'll see. It's like a little uh, 12 volt temperature control uh, controller, rather. And I've got some clamps. So. I'm sure I'm going to need to buy some more stuff at the hardware store, but this is what we've got to uh, work with for now, and let's see if we can get it done. So my plan is to actually tap into that vent right there. That goes up into our bedroom, um, and I'm going to pull air out of that so that the air that's coming into this compartment is coming directly from inside of our RV. So this is behind our fifth wheel hitch. Um, so I want the air coming in directly from our RV, so it'll be cool air, especially if we're running the AC. And then this door actually has the, the built-in vent for the batteries. I'm going to try and blow the hot air out of that. Uh, so we'll see if we can make this happen. First things first, I'm going to empty a bunch of stuff out of this compartment, so I have a little bit of air to work. Once upon a time this was organized um, and I got lazy and have just been throwing stuff in here which is definitely not the right thing to do especially around all this electrical equipment so maybe one day I'll be a little bit more organized. All right let's get to it. So my plan is to have the cold air come from that vent right there, circulate down, and kind of make its way across the bay from right to left, and then be pulled in from up top, because uh, the hot air is going to be rising, and then be blown out this vent. So hopefully my idea works. We'll see. So before getting too far into this, I want to see how well these uh, blowers work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of jump it to power real quick and see 
Sure looks like it. Wow, that actually moved a lot more air than I expected. It's a little louder than I expected too, but we'll make it work. So now I'm gonna figure out how in the world I'm gonna mount these things. So the first one I'm gonna do is gonna be the exhaust air. And looking around in the bay, I think I'm gonna try and mount it up here. Uh, I don't wanna really get in the way of my jack system, but I don't know where else to mount it to get it out of the way of everything else. Um, so I think that's probably going to be our best bet. I'm going to have to get an extension. Alright, I think this should be the trick. in the face with a screw. Oh, drop the screw. Yep. Again. New game. Guess how many times I drop the screw before I make it happen. in my mouth. Let's try again. Oh, cool. Hey, dropped it again. It's a good thing I'm not playing this in real time because you all would have left by now. In fact, there's probably a good many of you who already have. There it goes again. Huh. This is fun. So, back when I decided to play the game of how many times is David going to drop the screw, I figured it'd be two or three. I don't know how many it's been so far, but I'm already tired. <sighs> Almost had it that time. All right, so got it installed after this many tries. Um, I'm going to now install the ducting and tape it all up. Hopefully this works as well. And I'm now realizing that I probably should have uh, installed this before I put it up there, but it is what it is. Hey Getting uh, awfully close. You know it would probably be better than this tape? A hose clamp. Losing the hat. Can't have that. Alright, so my plan here is to kind of guesstimate how much slack I'm going to need in this ducting to allow it to kind of wrap around this way and plug into that little glue into that I just installed. So we'll see how it goes. Measure twice, cut once, right? That's, that's how the saying goes. Yeah, right about there. That should work. Never cut with a razor blade while I am cutting. I'm a safety guy, guys, believe it or not. It's uh, what I do professionally. And uh, I'm over here 
you can big that hypocrite. Gotta go get the uh, cutters. Be right back. Nothing like the uh, wrong tool for the job because I'm too lazy to go get the right tool. Comment now, am I going to regret this decision? No. I didn't regret it. All right, let's get this thing fastened. Now with this one, I am gonna use tape uh, because there are no barbs on this gland right here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw piece of tape right there and we'll do the same all around the circumference of the ducting. All right, hopefully that holds. All right, it was so hot I had to, so hot I had to take the hot off. All right, let's try that again. It was so hot I had to take the hat off. Um, all right, let's go ahead and we're gonna try and wire this thing up. So we're gonna go ahead and we are going to wire this thing up. Um, got some 12 gauge wire here, which is probably overkill for the situation. Dang it! Need to get something to strip these wires. I do have one of those right here. I don't have to go too far. Uh, so we're gonna get it wired up. We're gonna use uh, wire nuts to wire this thing up and uh, hopefully she'll run. So the tips on this thing were soldered, so getting rid of those because I am probably not doing this properly uh, by any means, but uh, these are only carrying 12 volts and uh, I think it was like not many amps, um, so I'm not really all that worried about it burning my RV down. Hopefully I don't... Uh, add a little foreshadowing text at the bottom of this um, and our RV is still alive when I'm done so that would be really cool and looks like I got the right size wire nuts I was a little worried about that oh yeah cool cool wired uh, the wrong two cables together because I was so focused on talking to you guys um, flip-flopped them so yeah Another thing you normally wouldn't see in a YouTube video, but I'm over here being an idiot, so you guys get to see that. All right, so let's go ahead and wire the positive to the positive, negative to the negative. Boom, got it done. Go ahead and cut this off. Oh, hey babe, how's it going? Good, I'm not burning the RV down or anything. Yeah, yeah you and me both. <laughs> Sweet Alright, we are all wire nutted together. So I took these fancy little uh, cable connector or cable holder thingies that I got from Walmart and I'm gonna be holding or securing the cabling with that. And then I'll probably uh, run them through a couple of those bad boys up there down to our Lynx power in. That should hopefully get us to electricity. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the end of this thing and throw some ring terminals on the end. So I will be able to connect it to do it right there. So you might be asking, David, you showed us this controller for, for the temperature. Uh, why didn't you wire it in to the wiring that you're about to connect to your Lynx distributor? That's a really good question. Um, I'm asking myself the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna retrace our steps and uh, we're going to 
get that controller wired in. All right, so here's the details and you don't need to know much. The power is now connected. Um, now I'm going to wire in my little controller thingy. So here, the power comes into these red and black cables and it comes out of this yellow and black cable. So it comes from the Lynx distributor to the red and black and then to the pump, or the pump, the blower thingy, uh, the yellow and black. And then supposedly I should be able to set a temperature threshold and this little temperature sensor should pick up when it crosses that threshold and cut the power on to the blower. Hope it works. All right, so I got our little controller thing wired up. I'm going to mount it real quick, but before I do that, I want to test it and make sure everything works first. So I'm going to go ahead and flip our solar back on. Flip on. Sounds like it's working. Looks like the controller is set to 21 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure if that's Celsius or Fahrenheit, but uh, I'm gonna figure that out and I won't subject you all to the noise while I do. So unfortunately, that's in Celsius. We live in America, we use Fahrenheit, but whatever, it is what it is. Simple calculation will get you figured out. So check that out. Right now it's at 24.1 degrees, which is, oh, I don't know, 70-ish? I don't know, something like that. Anyway, so I'm squeezing it between my thumbs and you can see the temperature going up. And once it hits, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 32.2. My fan kicks on. And now watch. I let go of the little temperature thing. And we got below 30.5 degrees Celsius which now means my pump kicks off, or my little fan thingy kicks off. The, uh, the biggest issue I'm seeing with this is this fan is really freaking loud. Um, and that's right under our bed, so that might piss me off. But, we'll see. I'll tell you what though, this thing moves some serious air. So, hey babe, our fan's really loud. But, it moves, uh, I think, 103 cubic feet per minute of air. Oh, feels really good. So, hopefully, we will be able to. Hopefully, we'll be able to sleep at night with this fan running. But uh, only time will tell. So initially, I had planned to install two of those guys. One to pull fresh air from that vent right there, um, which is in our bedroom, and then the one that is exhaust. Uh, the problem is, this is gonna be really loud. So unless I can find some of these blowers that are a lot quieter, I don't think I'm gonna want two running. So I think what we're gonna do, we're going to try it with just one and see how that goes. I'm gonna keep the second one just in case the one doesn't work out, but I think we're going to be a little bit loud for my liking, um, but hopefully we won't be over 90 degrees at night, and honestly I might be able to raise that temperature up over 100 degrees. Um, I just really need to do a little bit of research and see what my system can handle uh, as far as temperature goes, and uh, go from there. But I, I do want this bay to be as cool as, uh, as, cool as it makes sense to have it. Uh, Hope you guys liked this a little bit more raw video. Um, I, I didn't want all of our videos coming out to look like I knew what I was talking about all the time because I don't. That's not the reality of life. Um, so I wanted to show you all what it looks like when I'm doing a project that, uh, that doesn't have instructions and some of the trouble that uh, I go through, some of the stupid bonehead mistakes that I make. Um, yeah, hope y'all liked it. We'll see you next time.